Greetings, this is the Crunchy Fan. This is part three to the hero path of what if female Deku was a slime. Now, we'll continue after the sports festival with her, with Izumi, headed in class, with the class 1A back in class, waiting to see their internships. And Izumi chooses to go to the same internship as Sue. So, once they get to their internship, I, they meet up with the, uh, I've got the seal hero's name, um, if you know his name, put in the comment, put in the comments, um, so they meet up with him and his side, and his sidekick, where they, where they do their internship with them, dealing with the, um, the uh, drug trade, I think it was doing, um, much easier, due to Zumi being able to contain, capture the villains a lot easier. And her being allowed, and allowing, and her being able to be a lot more reckless. With, is it, with Izumi, then, then, uh, continuing to do our internships with, uh, Sue, as the internship would go as it did in canon. Then, and once they get back, now, in this timeline, since nobody else, so was in Hosa City and nobody else knew about Ida. Ida ended up being killed by the hero killer. So, once they get back to school, everybody hears about this and they're saddened by this. And then it gets to the final exams. With Izumi being paired up with or with um with uh, Bakugo. To fight against All Might. And it goes just about as it did in canon. Except for the part where... Except for All Might being flung into the flung into buildings a lot more often. And... Both Izumi and Bakugo end up passing their final, their final exam. As everybody else's final exam goes as it did in canon. As I think next is the uh, the training camp, yeah. So once they get to the training camp, and I'm, I'm very sorry if like um this isn't as good a quality as it usually is. I'm just I'm very tired right now. So. As, as they get to the, um, the train, the area where they normally are, they then meet up with the Wild Wild Pussycats. With, with, um, them being sent off the cliff as they were in canon. But this time they make it there much quicker due to Izumi using the, uh, water, water blade abilities as she called them, water blades, to, um, sli slice up all the um, monsters and make a path through the forest. As they get there a lot earlier in canon, they notice a little, uh, Izumi notices a young boy uh, near the, um, building at the training camp as she goes up to shake his hand as Koto would try to punch her. But the punch would go right through her, due to her bo due to her body being sort being sl slime. Since you know it's pretty easy to punch through that stuff. So Kota's hand is basically stuck, and and Izumi's actually actually going to having to get the help of of a Tiger and Aizawa to get um Kota out. As once Kota gets out, Izumi apologizes for him getting for getting his hand stuck. 
as Kota just walks off. And then we get to the, uh, the onsen scene. And if you're wondering, yes, I will be doing the onsen scene in most of my what ifs. The ones that aren't the villain ones, that is. So, once they get there, once they're in the onsen, um, everybody notices that Izumi's, that Izumi's ass body parts are basically, like, growing. And they're asking about that, as she states, as she then says that, uh, her body absorbs, wa absorbs water, so sh her body, so she can choose, so, not choose, um, a lot of her body parts can grow, so it's mainly like the parts that are, expo that are exposed to the water. So, Mineta hears this, as he starts immediately climbing the wall to see, and, and once he gets to the top of the wall, Kota is there to stop him. As he then falls back, as as then Mineta falls down, as he didn't cannon, with Kota doing the same once he looked back as Amina was thanking him. So once that happens, um, actually, in this one, since you know plot, um, Kota falls into the girl half, and Izumi ends up catching him. With her then, um, taking. Kota, it's her taking Kota to Mandalay, as she state as Mandalay then gives a um, little story about uh, who happened to Kota's parents. With Izumi feeling sorry for him, and she, and she goes to get something prepared for Kota. As she would, I think she would, she would probably get her, get him a nice get, gift and not. Not hero related in any way, shape, or form. Just something nice. Just uh, n something nice in general. So if you, I can't think of what what she could give him. So you guys think about it. Think of, you guys could uh, tell tell me what she gives him. So she goes and gets that gift for Kota and then give and lays it uh, by him before. And she leaves just before he wakes up, as Mandalay tell says thank thank you for getting him a gift, even as she then states if as either me then says, it's alright I'm just doing doing what anybody should do in that situation. As as um we then cut to um their quirk training. With Izumi is mainly being, um, um, controlling the uh, pH. Say, sort of similar to Mina's, she's sort of like uh, con going to control the uh, pH levels of her acid. Acid. And for those of you who don't know, pH is essentially a scale on what on whether it goes to acid, neutral, or alkaline. So like acid is your stuff like vinegar and sulfuric acid and and. Alkalines are things like uh, baking soda, and neutrals just stuff like water. So she's currently tr we're practicing on that, and practicing on how far she can stretch and how far harsh, how sharp her blades can be. And then we get to the uh, league's attack on the training camp, and yes, and. Uh, Izumi does know about Kota's little hiding spot that he goes to sometimes. So she goes there and basic and she uh sees somebody about to kill Kota. Uh, she then uh sends sends a blade right into a muscular's hand and it pins him to the wall. With her then stretching her arm out to Grab Kota and pulling him close, pulling him close. As oh. sorry about that. As muscular as muscular is about to get off, Izumi then sort of like stores stores Kota in 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 her in her torso area. 
And as I explained in the villain part, she can store stuff in there. So she stores him in there for like sa for safety. As muscular then runs in for a char for a charging attack as Zumi, then basically um, slashes all the muscle tendons that grew out muscular. As she then pins them into a wall, basically capturing him with. With the lead continuing their assault and Bakugo and Tokiyami being captured like they were in canon. And that is where I'm going to leave it off. The All for One and All Might fight will be its own part. And I will see you guys next time.